if you are appearing for a salesforce interview these questions can really make difference so let's move on to the first question that there is a validation rule that when the status of the case is new the system must throw an error saying that status can't be new now customers are trying to bulk upload the data for the same object and when they do that they get the same error how can we skip this error while data load without deactivating the validation rule so in very simple terms what they want over here is that there is a validation rule and they want to bypass the validation rule when they bulk upload the data without deactivating the validation rule so the validation rule would somewhat look like is pick val status now if you check this validation rule out that this validation rule is going to get fired even when you normally upload the data or when you just normally use the data like up update the data the validation rule is going to get fired in both the cases now how do we skip it in the case of data load so what you can do is you can create a field named as bulk upload this would be a checkbox field and this will be a back end field this means you are not going to add it to the front end it won't be available on the page layout and by default the value of this field would be false now once you have done this you have to include this bulk upload field within your validation rule okay and you have to add false so what's going to happen is that if normal person is going to use this particular or update the record or create the record if they make the status as new the bulk upload field by default would be false and they can't even update it because it's not available on the page layout so the validation rule will get fired for them successfully now if someone wants to do the bulk upload of the data what they can do is they can just make this particular field as true if they do it the whole validation rule will get completely skipped and then you can bulk upload the data even though without deactivating the validation rule so this was the solution for the first question let's move on to the next question that when we make a call out from the test classes without using the test dot set mock what is the status code written so let's move on to our apex code so as you can see right now i have a test class which calls this particular apex class sample callout class dot making callout and in this particular class what i'm trying to do over here is that i'm just trying to make callout to a test.com to get the data and based on that uh, based if the response code is 200 then i'm proceeding further and i'm also printing the response code over here now if previously i was making a test dot set mock basically i was creating a mock data and then i was making a callout but now i am not doing it so let's understand what would be the status code in certain scenarios so now if i run this test class and if i debug it i won't get anything at all and the reason is over here is that if i go to this particular test class and if i see the overall coverage it gets till this point and after that it does not proceeds further the reason is because the test classes are not capable enough to make call outs to the external system and thus response is not getting generated and as the response is not getting generated there is no response code and there is nothing at all now that is the reason why what we do is we use test dot set mock to create that fake response and then pass the fake response over here to cover the rest of the part that is the reason why we write it so in simple question in simple answer to this question is that you won't get any response because there was no response generated at all because we were not able to make a call out so the answer to this question is we won't get any response at all let's move on to the next question now before moving to the next question if you have your any upcoming interview you can schedule a mock interview with me by clicking the top met link below let's move on to the next question that is let's say we have one account named as account 1 and under that there are two contacts con1 and con2 now whenever we will make changes to con1 con2 must get updated with the same details in such case in want what context will you write the trigger so let's understand the scenario we have an account record over here under that there are two contacts con1 and let's name it as con2 okay i am now going to name it as account1 C C one and C two, both of them are related to the same account itself. Both of them has same parent. That account one is their parent. Now what they want is, when contact one is updated, they want the contact two should get also updated with the same details. The question is, in which context will you write? In is it in before or after? 
because people might think that we have to write it inside the before context because it's the same object right we have to update on the same object that is contact from here when contact is updated again we have to update the contact so people might think that we need to update it inside the before context but the answer is after if you are being answering after then you are correct basically we have to do it in after because before context is used when we want to update on the same object and same record so if you see right now here the first condition is fine same object that's perfectly fine because the contact and contact but it's not the same record it's a different record and if it's same object same record only then you can use before context or otherwise you have to use after context so this was all the interview questions that i had to discuss in this video if you found this video helpful i request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel